we're going to talk about developmental dysplasia of the hip. And this is when the hip joint doesn't form properly in the child. The hip is either subluxatable or dislocated, so it's not sitting properly in the joint, or, and the cup part of the joint is not formed properly. When children get older and become adults, this can lead to a hip replacement due to arthritis. This does not cause pain in the child. And here you have a picture of a normal hip and one that is dislocated. 80% of children diagnosed with hip dysplasia are female. The left side is affected 60% of the time, the right side 20%, and it is bilateral 20% of the time. The left hip is more commonly affected due to the position of the baby in the uterus putting pressure on the hip causing it to sublux or dislocate. Risk factors for hip dysplasia are genetics. If you have a positive family history, this can cause problems. If the baby is first born, if the baby is a female, if the baby was breech in utero, and there seems to be an increased incidence of hip dysplasia in the winter. This picture is depicting what the hip looks like if one hand is the socket and the other is the ball. And the idea in a normal hip is that the ball sits beautifully in the hip socket, nice and stable, as opposed to a baby with hip dysplasia where the ball is not sitting perfectly centered or the actual socket, even if the ball is centered, is not formed properly. It is more vertical rather than formed like a cup. The physical exam on these babies can show that some of the muscles at the hip are tight so that you cannot open the hip all the way when you bring the legs open. There can be a difference in the length of the legs with the dislocated side being shorter. If you bend the knees up, as you see on the picture here on the right, if one knee is higher than the other, the lower one is probably dislocated. We do something called a Barlow exam and an Ortolani exam, named after various pediatric orthopedists that help us explain our physical findings when we push on the baby's hip and we feel the hip click or if we bring the leg out to the side in what we call abduction and we feel the hip clunk in. And these signs help tell us if there is hip dysplasia present. Imaging is usually done as ultrasound in small babies. We don't start imaging small babies until the babies are at least six weeks of age and only do this until about four months of age. The idea is to wait for the mother's hormones to exit the baby so that by week six, there is no extra looseness in the joint from the mother's hormones. And by the time the baby is four months of age, the baby is forming bone and this interferes with the ultrasound. So somewhere when the bone is forming, we go from taking ultrasounds of the hip to x-rays of the hip, and usually starting at about five months of age. And this, of course, depends on the development of the specific baby. Some are ahead of schedule and some are behind. So how do we treat hip dysplasia? We brace babies to hold the ball of the femur pointing deeply into the hip socket so the hip joint can form around it. If you put a ball, which is the head of the femur, into the socket, this should cause it to want to form around it. The types of braces we use in the smaller babies, we use a pavlic harness up until about age six months, which looks like overalls. And then once the babies are six months and older, we use an abduction brace, which looks more like plastic shorts that keep the baby's hips open in this frog position. Now we're going to put a pavlic harness on this baby. First, we open all the straps. Then we place this harness under the baby with the chest strap at nipple level, making sure that you can put your hand under and the baby has room to cry. Then we close the shoulder straps either at the factory mark or a little below to make sure there's two finger breasts below the armpit on each side. Then we open up the straps for the legs and 
I like to take the scissors and cut a small piece of ribbon off the upper strap to allow extra room behind the knee so this area does not get bruised by the straps. After this is done, we place the baby's legs into the shoe portion, which simply is a sock over the foot with the straps cinched around the legs, but not tight, just to keep the legs in position. The strap coming from the chest is in front of the knee. And you can see that with the red and blue straps. And at this point, we make sure to drop the red and blue straps to allow the baby's legs to be able to be stretched downward. So there is a straight line going across the legs. And we check to see if the straps behind the baby are tight. Depending on the baby's problem, we may give the baby extra room, as in this case, with these straps that are behind. In other cases, we may need those straps to be tight to help with positioning of the baby's hip. And you can see, as I mentioned, the baby's legs, when pulled down, there is a straight line across between the two legs. The baby's allowed to bring her legs up as much as she wants, but we need to allow her room to come down. Now we mark where all the straps are so that when mom removes the harness, which she is allowed in this case, she will know where the straps came from. Usually the front and the back strap are not opened up when the harness is removed for changing the baby clothes-wise. The diapers are easily changed with the baby in the harness since the baby is held in a position that allows you to get out the diaper. This position is called the human position. This is the position the baby would be in if she was in a baby carrier. And it's a position which allows the baby tummy time. The baby's able to get up the same way she would without the harness to work on neck and arm muscles. And you can see mom holding the baby easily in this human position. Now we will discuss how to place an abduction brace. The abduction brace is what is used when the baby is too big for a pavlic harness. All the straps are open and the baby is positioned into the abduction brace, taking care to bring the straps that are around the legs up around the legs, closing the straps that hold them in place. To keep the foam that rolls around the leg from moving around too much, parents can work with sticky Velcro tape and place it on either side of the foam where I am pointing. Now the waist strap is closed. It doesn't have to be super tight, but should be snug. Baby again is in the human position easily picked up by mom babies are able to stand in this brace babies are able to sit the success rate for both the pavlic harness and the abduction brace are approximately 90 percent for this non-operative treatment and we hope that you will be within this group For more information, please discuss your particular case with your physician.